So, um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome for joining us. I'm going to share my screen with you. Can everybody hear me? Bernard, can you confirm that you see my screen? Uh, yes, I can see your screen and I can hear you as well. Okay. So let me try and put that in presentation mode. Okay, so um, welcome everybody for joining us today uh, with a big data stack uh, webinar on connected consumer technologies for retailers. I'm Marike Willems, I'm project manager at Trust IT Service and we lead the dissemination work package in this uh, in the project of big data stack. Um, so let me pass it. So Big Data Stack is working on a holistic stack for big data applications and operations, but I won't go further into that because uh, my fellow uh, presenters uh, will do that. Um, and Big Data Stack has uh, implements its uh, holistic stack in three use cases. On one of them uh, is the connected consumer, and that is the topic of this webinar uh, today. So these are the speakers of today. So it's Demosthenes Kyriasis. Um, he is Assistant Professor of Service Oriented Architectures at the University of Piraeus in the Research Centre. Um, and we have uh, Bernat Quesada, Project Manager of Merchant Services in uh, Atos Worldline. He is leading the work on the use case. And uh, we have Orlando Avila, a Senior Software Architecture in uh, Atos. So the agenda for today is uh, the poll. We have four questions and two minutes uh, to answer these questions uh, because we would really like to know a little bit more about you, about the ins ask you for your insights. Uh, and then we will move on to uh, Demos. Uh, he will talk about the big data stack uh, overview. Uh, then, we'll, then Bernat, uh, who's leading the work uh, on uh, the connected consumer, use case will tell you all about how that uh, improves how that how big data stack adds value to um to the retail sector uh, and orlano avila will talk about the data-driven infrastructure management um, and then finally bernard quesada will give a short overview of the next steps that the project will work on in this uh, in the context of the connected consumer and then um we would like to give the floor to the um uh, to you uh, to ask your questions and answer to ask your questions and we will provide the answers uh, hopefully um, so you can do that um, through uh, the chat you can um, you can ask your questions through the chat uh, the chat you find it um, at the the bottom um, in the the panel of the the webinar tool okay so um, we will ask you the, the questions of the poll at uh, a later stage. We now pass on to Dimos Denis. Dimos, I will give you the presenter rights. Dimos, do you have that? So is that okay? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, so I will I will try to introduce the project. Um, the goal of this presentation is, of course, not to get into too much technical details. Um, we would like to give a presentation of what the project is about and uh, you know the key offerings and how these are related um, to the connected consumer scenario, which is the main topic of um, this webinar. Um, so, what is um, big data stack all about? So, uh, we had to face some. Sorry. So, we had to face a couple of challenges, and one of the uh, items we were thinking when um, designing this project was that you know data come to a different pace, meaning that data are generated in a specific rate, which is not the same for all data sources, 
or that you know you might have data sources um, that are used and others that are not used so we need to account that data come in a different um, rate and this is also true for a connected consumer scenario for example you might have data sources um, in store or you might have data sources online and you know these do not produce data at the same rate and at the same pace something related to that is that when you obtain the data maybe you don't need to process all again at the same rate i mean uh, streaming data you may want to process in real time while um, other types of data you get in just per day you may be doing a different kind of processing um, a second key aspect a second challenge has to do with applications so the applications are not monolithic so they are not anymore monolithic applications have different application components, so they are kind of composed applications. And not only that, an additional aspect is that the typical applications uh, are accompanied with another set of services, which we call data service. Now, a typical data service could be a, um, a storage service, or another typical data service could be a cleaning service. Uh, so applications are not alone anymore. Applications consist of many different services and we need to account for all these services uh, during deployment and during the provision of services for big data analytics. Um, a key aspect, another challenge we have to face is that nothing is written in stone at the end. There are changes on all different layers someone could think of um, in a big data environment and this could be changes to the data themselves, could be changes on the data sources, could be changes on the resources, the VMs, the containers, um, in general the machines that are used for the data analytics. So what we need to provide is infrastructure that is adaptable to these changes. Um, another aspect we have seen and we are experiencing in the big data world has to do with many different stakeholders and many different actors in the overall ecosystem. So there are business analysts that design their business kind of workflows. Um, then there are data scientists that try to map these workflows to their algorithms or try to develop algorithms for whatever a business person um, is looking for. Um, there are technical people and there are engineers that work on the infrastructure level and the infrastructure side. So across the complete data life cycle, at the end, there are different stakeholders, different actors uh, we need to accommodate their needs and these actors have different at the end objectives. Um, one last key point uh, when designing big data stack has to do, has to do with openness. So designing an environment and providing an environment that is very good but for a specific algorithm or, or for a specific case or for a specific retailer is not what we wanted. Uh, so we want to increase the openness and the extensibility of the environment and this was one of the main challenges um, we are facing. Now, what we are, we are proposing to address all this? Uh, starting from the very last one I just mentioned and the openness, for that we provide something that we call a data toolkit. So a data toolkit is an environment that allows data scientists to ingest their own algorithm. Um, in today's webinar, you will listen about a recommendation algorithm, about something we are doing in the connected consumer world. At the end, you know, you or someone else could have his, her own algorithm and would like to ingest and take advantage of the rest of the environment. This is done through the toolkit. <clears throat> the baseline for that, uh, for the overall provisioning of services, starting from the top left corner, is what we call a data-driven infrastructure management system. Everything that uh, we are doing on the infrastructure level for the provision of resources and the management of the quality of service is done based on data aspects. Uh, the second key offering uh, addresses the, the decision makers, the, the providers, the data providers, the organizations. Uh, this is what we call the data as a service. So we provide a set of uh, solutions that enable data to be cleaned, data to be modeled, data to be stored, and data to be analyzed so as to provide value. Uh, the process modeling and optimization framework basically addresses the business needs, allowing the business people uh, the business persons to develop their own workflows on an abstraction level that is uh, what they need. I mean, not getting into technical details. And then we take this flow and we try to map it to the exact uh, process to be executed. 
Finally, we address the, the needs of application providers and application engineers. Whenever you have a big data application and you would like to deploy it, execute it, uh, and get the results, how do you know the resources needed? Okay, so we provide a dimensioning workbench that can dimension an application in terms of resource needs. Now, all of these are you know, the key main building blocks and outcomes. How do we achieve that? Um, this is an initial architecture we have developed. So it's a conceptual architecture that shows the flows of all this. Uh, on this part of the webinar, I will only focus on the, on the upper layer, which is the user interaction layer, uh, because the person who is leading the infrastructure management work in the project, uh, Orlando, will follow up uh, with details on that. Uh, so just to, you know, to briefly guide you and walk you through the process, it all starts from the process modeling. So there is a business person who, for example, in this case, in a case of um, a retail scenario, would most probably say, okay, I would like to classify my customers. And then based on this classification, I would like to proceed. So the next step would be a um, campaign selection, for example, a marketing campaign selection. So we would we provide to them an environment, the process modeling environment through which they can model this. Uh, and this is the first outcome, a process, mod, a, pro <clears throat> a process model. Now, of course, there are some processes in the process model that can be automatically mapped. Mapped to what? Mapped at the end to algorithms that can be executed directly. So in the example I gave about the classification scenario or you know, a clustering scenario of customers, uh, we could think that uh, maybe, you know, you could do clustering with K-means or you could do clustering with Bayesian networks, etc. Um, so someone could directly map this, and this is what we call the process mapping. So there are processes from the business process workflow that can be directly mapped. Now, however, there, there would be processes that cannot be directly mapped to an existing algorithm, an existing solution. And for that, we provide the next step in the process, which is the data toolkit, um giving the floor to data scientists to develop the algorithm or to map the algorithm of what a business person has specified to something that is realizable uh, following this at the end we have what we expect to be a playbook so at the end it is an um, executable graph uh, that can be deployed on the infrastructure and then be managed accordingly what do we miss in this picture is that we miss how many resources and what kind of resources do we need? And that's the purpose of uh, the last part of the dimensioning of the interaction layer, which is the dimensioning workbench, providing estimation and prediction of resources uh, for the specific application graph at the end for the overall uh, business workflow that has been uh, composed by a business person. Um, then this is redirected to the infrastructure management layer uh, for which more details will come later on after um, you all hear about the use case and how we tackle it. Uh, before closing this presentation, I would like to say who is contributing to the project. Uh, so we are a big consortium of people that bring um, expertise in different areas. 14 partners in total. Uh, the project is led by IBM in Israel, IBM Research Lab. It's a 36-month project, and we are you know, in the middle of the project, actually, on month 18. Uh, so there are already prototypes and things that are ready to be used. We are releasing them. Most of them are as open source. And uh, we would be glad, of course, after the end of uh, this presentation to follow up with questions. It's, it's, it's just missing a few things. It's Thank you, Demosthenes. Um, Bernat, can I ask you to um, to present your part on the use case and uh, explain how uh, the life of end users in retail uh, become better with big data tech technologies? Um, do you have the sharing buttons in front of you? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Can you see my screen? Okay. Yes, we can. So thank you. Uh, the floor is Thanks, Maria. Okay. okay. Before, before we get into further details about the use case, uh, I would like to say a few words about the context of the use case that will help to understand it better. Yeah, okay. Then, first of all, I would like to talk about the business context that retailers are facing nowadays. 
retail business, uh, it is a highly competitive market on which uh, each customer matters. Uh, let's think of, of, I think of globalization, which has brought new opportunities to retailers, but also introduced new global competitors in the market. In such a context, keeping customers' loyalty for retailers, it has become a must. Uh, so they need to have an attractive offer and differentiate, and differentiate uh, from competitors. Uh, and what is the, the, the situation nowadays? Uh, currently, uh, the personalization of, 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 the, of the user experience in the applications of the retailers is, uh, is, is still a challenge. Uh, everything is too simple and, and, and they have uh, data uh, and customer segments, for example, uh, which are traditional and out of date. Uh, they, they count on their own historical data, not linked to tendencies or context. And they don't, uh, they don't take into account the external data sources, uh, basically social media. And, uh, and in this context, they are unable to, to produce predictions. Uh, when I'm telling uh, all this, uh, I remember of, of a comment that, that one of our customers uh, made to us uh, some days ago. Uh, they were telling me that uh, that the the promotions they were they were recommended uh, uh, they were all day uh, all all fashion uh, they they were uh, recommending to them uh, pampers and and uh, their sons were now like uh, like uh, six seven years old no? so the reason for that was that they they, they were not uh, updating the their the segmentation uh, the customer segmentation and that was producing that. And they were basing the, the, the recommendations on, on that old-fashioned uh, customer segmentation, uh, which was producing a situation like this. No? Uh, what is uh, what is what uh, the predictive analysis can can offer to to the retail sector? It can offer uh, it can it can offer uh, things like uh, to adapt uh, the most appropriate messages to to each customer. It can also offer. Uh, to, to provide only those promotions that, that best suits customer needs at the right time. Or it can predict potential buyers for products or, or services. Or, for example, improve the shopping experience for consumers. Or open new business opportunities for retailers. Such as, for example, push new products to customers uh, and in this way uh, increasing the sales and keeping the customers loyalty. Okay, so this is the, the current status of the retail market, not uh, things the all of the predictions they are doing uh, are based on on, on historical data and, and some and many times is, is uh, out of date data. Okay, so if we if we try to 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 put context in the in the use case. The application what we what we are doing in, inside the big data stack. Uh, we are uh, worldline and we are collaborating along with one of the largest Spanish distribution companies. Okay, concretely a, a distribution company uh, which is strong in, in food, in grocery. Okay, uh, this company uh, we have to manage uh, for our use case. We have to manage with with this amount of data. No, we we, we are thinking about 3,000 physical stores, 1,2 million products, 1 million customers, 3,000 million uh, ticket items. Which is like two years of history. Altogether, it is uh, uh, what we have to manage is one terabyte of data. Um, the challenge we 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 have uh, is to build a collaborative filtering recommender system over big data stack that could help our partner to personalize product predictions uh, to their customers, uh, and in this way, increasing the customer satisfaction and loyalty. Okay. As I said before, the challenge is, is to, to build a, a collaborative filtering recommender system. Uh, in collaborative filtering, recommendations are calculated based on, on the taste of customers that are similar to me, uh, in contrast with, with content-based uh, recommender systems. Uh, we will focus on, on what other customer has bought and not in, in what, uh, what I have bought in the past. And this is the, the, the idea and I want to, to, to give here. Uh, how we will do that? Uh, 
uh, when we, for example, buy an item uh, or, or when we rate a product in an e-commerce site, uh, we are providing valuable information to companies that can learn a lot about us. And this kind of information is what, what the system uh, will use to make the calculation of the recommendations. Concretely, in our case, uh, what we will be using is, is uh, purchases from the customers, uh, the, the history of orders that the customer has made in, in the past, the two years history I was mentioning before. And we, we are also uh, planning to, to, to collect uh, implicit feedback that the applications that will use our, our recommender system uh, will give us about about how the recommendations were were going or this feedback along with the with the historic of purchases will will be the information that we will be, will be managing analyzing and using for for producing the recommendation uh, to make to make the recommender system the, the uh, what we have done is to 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 make use of an already implemented uh, algo, uh, algorithm concretely uh, we are using Spark ML lead, uh, the implementation of alternating list squares. Okay, uh, but uh, prior to, to the invocation of the algorithm, uh, we have to, to, to calculate an a input matrix uh, in order to, to define to define uh, which are which customers are, are are in the same segment. We can say which which customers are fine, and we also have to to rate. Uh, to calculate a, a rating for each of the products, since since we don't have uh, explicit feedback, but we have the history the history of orders. What we are doing is to apply uh, some some logical some some function uh, to calculate this this rating this rating for the products. Okay, and and then what what uh, once we have made this this calculation of which matrices we have to 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 send to to the algorithm. Uh, we, we 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 execute the algorithm, no? but but in this uh, in these matrices, uh, uh, what we do is to to uh, to have a similar uh, users uh, in our case users that has bought in the same in the same uh, shop and that belong to the same uh, customer segment. Okay, and and what we do is to 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 calculate what is the affinity of each user with each with each product and, and, and to, to give an, a, a rate a rating for that okay but uh, but what it happens to us is that uh, in many of the of the items of the matrix uh, there are blank values okay and these blank values uh, uh, the op the objective of alternating list squares is to to fill these blank values with with a with a rating with a estimated rating that uh, and then once we have this matrix, the, the products that we will be recommending to our users to, to, for, for each of, of these users will be the ones with the highest ranking, okay? And this, this is the idea of what the algorithm uh, is doing. Okay, uh, what we have done, uh, what the business uh, uh, analyst uh, has uh, has uh, imposed is a business constraint saying that the recommendations should be calculated every day before 6 a.m. Okay, and this uh, business constraint uh, becomes uh, for the system a, a business objective. Okay, that uh, that will have to be taken into account for for the other roles of the of the of the participants in in the in the in the implementation of the use case in, in order to, to to assure it. No, so everything. It starts from from for us for a from from a business uh, constraint that we have to 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 fulfill, okay, which is that that uh, the one I, I mentioned here, okay. Then if we go further, uh, once we have this business constraint, uh, what we have to do uh, in order to to feed in big data stack is is the the KPIs for for each of the application service. The the picture you can see here is the 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 picture of the different application services, the different microservices that our our recommender system, our first version of the recommender system is 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 expected to have. No, on on one side we have uh, a services access layer, which is uh, a layer that will uh, provide the the recommendations to the external applications. When we think of an external application, we are thinking. For example, an e-commerce site or a, an application 
for loyalty of the of the of our of our partner okay any application that that uh, that uh, that could uh, could request uh, us uh, some some kind of some kind of recommend, a recommendation for a user, okay? And this this service access layer is not only providing recommendations already calculated in, in the database, but also uh, collecting the feedback that these external applications uh, has has co collected from the recommendations they were they were provided. For example, um, external application could uh, give us information such as and the the user was uh, was uh, re uh, requesting us more detail about the product by clicking and, and watching the, the 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 product card of of the product we were recommending. Or for example, it could also provide us uh, uh, information about about the the user uh, said he was not interested about the the item you were you were recommending to to us. Okay, this uh, this information is valuable for the system because. Uh, because it can uh, give it can give us information about whether this uh, product we have to to remove it from the list of of recommended items or, or not, no? or if we have to 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 potential uh, this this item because the, the user was interested, no? and, and and so all this information, uh, providing information and giving feedback is 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 done by by the by the by this service access layer then. Uh, what we have is the 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 in, here down in the in the in the down part of the picture is the is the the calculation of the recommendations itself no what the the model we are we are working now uh, is is a batch uh, model okay the the recommendations has to be calculated as the business object was saying before the 6 a.m in in the at night and then what what we are doing is is basically to 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 to, to have a batch processing uh, model on which uh, we 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 run all of these uh, application services one for selecting the data that will that we will be taking into account another one to prepare the the, the data needed for the data matrix then uh, another process the product recommendations calculation to 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 make the invocation to the to the alternating list squares algorithm and, and uh, all of this is made uh, uh, in an, on a nightly process. Uh, we have a, a business constraint. Then, according to this business constraint, uh, what what our application engineer and, and, and the and the data scientist has have to do is to 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 see what are the the KPIs for each of these of these processes, so that uh, at 6 a.m. we have we have the recommendations calculated. And then what they have done has been to to define what are the 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 KPAs for each of the of these of these, and also the, the what is the service level objective for each of the of the of the of these application services. This this information is, is is important in big data stack because later on we will see that we have to provide a big data stack, the, the application dimensioning workbench, so that so that according to these SLOs, uh, the uh, the platform, the big data stack platform, is is guaranteeing that that uh, the whole the whole uh, the, the the SLOs the service level objectives are guaranteed uh, no matter what it happens no so so this is this is this is uh, important no then if we go further uh, how how do we fit this information in the in the system what we do is at first the application engineer uh, as I was saying before is is uh, providing the quality of service for each of the application services. Uh, it is also provided. It can also provide uh, what is the expected memory, CPU, and, and replicas that he wants to 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 that that he expects uh, uh, the, the the application service service will need. It's only a, a informative because later on uh, the 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 provision of of resources will be. Will be given by by the application dimensioning workbench, which is the 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 tool uh, that the application engineer uses to to feed this information. Uh, then what 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 the what the user of the uh, of the application dimensioning workbench is also doing is is uh, is uh, is to provide an Docker Compose file, which is a file that that uh, describes the what the application is comprised of, and it also describes 
and the interaction between the different application components that, that I was showing before. Then big data stack, what is what it does inside is something that, that Orlando will explain later on, okay? But basically for the end user, the, the view that, that he gets, what he gets after, after, after a, a certain time is uh, a, a list of, of, of different and deploying configurations the, uh, that that the that the platform is is suggesting to him, and in for uh, for each configuration, uh, it is also giving information about what is the quality of service levels expected, and what is the expected memory, CPU, and number of replicas that will be running for this configuration. No? And then once uh, the the application engineer selects one of these configurations. Uh, by confirming the the big data stack uh, platform, what he's doing is is the is deploying the the application in OpenShift. Okay, but this is fully transparent to 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 the to the application engineer. So this would be an example of what application deployment is is made by by the by the application engineer. Okay, then. Uh, what are the solutions that uh, that uh, that the platform is is bringing is giving us as in, in in the retail ecosystem? The ones I would like to highlight is, for example, require resources. Uh, if if I am a, a business person, I don't know how many resources will be required for my application components. Uh, usually, uh, I cannot dimension my application easily. Uh, in fact, making the capacity planning for a big data application. Uh, we have seen that uh, according to, uh, well, we have seen the the, the 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 amount of data that we have to to manage uh, uh, this uh, this capacity planning for the application has to be tackled in a different way than in classic applications no <clears throat> basically due to the to the big amount of data to be processed in different moments of time resources need to to auto scale in order to absorb to absorb the massive amount of information coming from heterogeneous sources, and and what we what we do in big data stack to to not to not to not to have to worry about, about the, the 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 resources that we need is basically to, we define our as we saw previously we define our service level objectives, and from the first deployment the platform is proposing us to allocate those resources calculated as needed to fulfill our service level objectives. Okay, this is this is one 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 thing that that is is nice, no? To to have and, and that is uh, that is uh, that is uh, helping us to to save uh, money and time, no? What other thing is, uh, is providing us the the big data stack platform? Uh, provision of resources. The resources need to be provided for data analytics and manage in an automated way. We don't want to mess with containers built to our machines, etc. In data analytics, the computer scientist uh, uh, should have the resources uh, provisioned automatically. Okay, and this is something that that the platform is is uh, is uh, helping us to to with. Okay, uh, what what is the other thing that we would like to have the the runtime adaptations? No, we would we have deployed uh, as I as I showed uh, before our application. Uh, for the first time, but we would uh, we would like that that in case of uh, during runtime, if uh, there can be new data sources, different rates in the incoming data, etc., and the infrastructure needs to adapt automatically to accommodate these changes. The objective would be to guarantee uh, the fulfillment of the quality of service under any circumstance at the minimum cost. The, infra the infrastructure, I would say, needs to, to adapt according to changes in the incoming data sets. And big data stack is able to dynamically adapt uh, the needed infrastructure so that the service level objectives defined by the data scientists are always fulfilled. Okay. And, and the last thing that, that I would like to mention as, as, a, as a strong point of, of big data stack is the end user tool. Okay. Apart from the application dimension in Workbench, Big Data Stack uh, provides other tools that allow business analysts and data practitioners to store huge amounts of data, okay, in a simple and inexpensive way. This uh, will be part of the of the of the, of the coming webinars of the other use cases, uh, and and 
but but these tools are, are also a, a, a nice thing uh, for the for the business analysts and for the for the data scientists okay and and that's all thanks to everyone thanks bernat um Orlando, can I ask you to take the floor? Yes, sure. Thank you. Do you um, have the presenter rights? Um, not yet. Andrea, could you give? Yes. Orlando, yeah. No. Thank you. Yes, Perfect. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so um, here I will be focusing on the data-driven infrastructure management capability of the platform. As uh, Demos and Bernard said, there are other components or capabilities in the project, in the platform, for example, the user interaction layer. Um, in here, we are going to be explaining how the infrastructure is able to self-adapt and to dimension the resources uh, provisioning it to, to the big data application um, uh, at runtime. Um, an, an example of a flow could be the application engineer is using the web panel uh, of, of big data stack to describe things like the analytics tasks and uh, also the, the process, uh, the sequence or the series of, of services that are changed together to produce a certain analytics and insight. Um, also, uh, and more importantly here, the quality of service. So in this case, for example, the latency or the response time of, of the services serving the recommendation in this case. So if we expect that a high number of users or are going to visit the um, the web page of, of the of the e-commerce, then we would expect a high amount of events going into the system and, and also a high number of requests for recommendations for those users. So we want really low latency there and uh, well, the application engineer or the data scientist through the data toolkit uh, are able to specify the, 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 the service level objective or the level of latency that they want and also in, in, in analytics and especially in batch analytics is important the throughput. Uh, in this scenario that Bernat was uh, explaining we are interested in maximizing the number of recommendations per unit per unit of time or the number of yeah, users that are let's say compute and their recommendation per unit of time. So, um, so again, this is another attribute or service level objective that the application engineer can put into the system. Um, other component, which is not the part that uh, we are going to be explaining today, but is critical here, is the application dimensioning workbench because from the requirements, the quality of service constraints that the application engineer said or specified together with the with the description of the application and the components of the of the analytics application all that is used by this component to benchmark the application different deployment configurations and patterns giving more or less resources uh, obviously the more the resources you, you use them the more the the cost that you do, that you have to run your analytics, so it's really critical to use uh, as few resources as possible while meeting the objectives. So this application dimensioning workbench component is is doing, let's say, different experiments with different patterns and all that information, and 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 this is part of the data driven infrastructure management. All, all that experience and and data. Um, is fed into the ADS ranking component. Uh, this component is going to select the best, um, the best deployment pattern, um, and is going to request the user confirmation for that deployment. 
uh, we want a self-managing and self-adaptive system here, but not too autonomous. We, uh, at least in this phase in the project, we ask for confirmation to, to the user when we want to redeploy the application. So, um, in this case, the ADS ranking is selecting the best deployment, is requesting confirmation to the application engineer, and then the application engineer says, yes, that's that's uh, an acceptable um, deployment with a prediction, with an estimation of the cost, and a, an estimation of, of the quality of service that is going to be providing, and so on. Um, with the confirmation of the user, then we do the deployment. So we Basically, we take the images of the containers of the application and we deploy them on a cloud native infrastructure in this case, which is based on Kubernetes. The distribution is OpenShift provided and, uh, by, by Red Hat. So we, we, we have the containers running and we start monitoring the quality of service. Uh, we call it triple monitoring because we are able to monitor the performance at different levels of the application. And with levels, I mean the application-specific metrics or performance indicators like the ones I said before, latency and throughput. But also, we are going to be monitoring the, the data services, the data stores, um, uh, and also the infrastructure, the resources, the machines that, that we are using, and the networks, uh, networking resources, and, and, and so on. Um, all that monitoring information is going to be evaluated and is going to, um, yeah, basically, it's going to be presented to the user. And, and more importantly, we determine whether the quality of service is being, been, being satisfied or not. Um, when we have violations of the quality of service, then we have this component that is called the dynamic orchestrator. And it's really, let's say, the brain of, of the data-driven infrastructure management because it's going to decide when we should change the deployment. Um, and this is an autonomous decision. And the user doesn't need to, to know uh, how to improve the deployment and how to which resources really we need in order to improve the quality of services and that's the key thing of the of the self adaptive system here in the in the in the infrastructure side um, obviously this decision is based on all the information of all the things that that, that uh, have happened in the system before, not only the benchmarking of the application in the first deployment, but also all the all the experience that we had in, in production with the actual with the actual application. All that is stored in a central repository that we call Global Decision Tracker. And from the decision to change um, to change the deployment, then we have again the ADS ranking making um, an exploration of all the possibilities that we have to improve, um, well, to, to change the deployment and to improve the quality of service. Uh, for example, increasing the number of replicas or the number of instances of a service uh, to uh, decrease to drop again the latency, for example, the response time of that service could be like a, um, a realistic realistic action to make. Um, so the ADS ranking uh, produces a new deployment with more replicas, basically more instances of a, of a service. Then the deploy uh, component realizes that decision and, and that action. And well, in this case, we could see, for example, more uh, a higher number of containers serving the same functionality or, or the same service. Um, so we would expect a reduction or a, a drop in the, uh, for example, the response time of the services that are containerized here. Uh, so the user through the web control UI can see this drop and can see whether the decision and the action was right or, or was completely uh, yeah, misleading. Um, finally, just to um, just to yeah, 
to say that the, the important thing here is that the application developer is completely agnostic to all this uh, work and knowledge that you need to have in order to optimally deploy your application. And in big data analytics applications, you will have to provision a huge amount of, uh, of, of resources, compute resources, so virtual machines and or containers and also um, storage. So um, the nice thing is that uh, this system makes uh, hopefully an optimal decision and continuously reevaluating the decision in order to, to meet the quality of service, which is what really the engineer is interested in. Um, so that's all from my side, Mariek. Thanks, Fernando. Thank you. Um, Bernat, can you give us uh, a short overview of the next steps um, for, the, uh, for the connected uh, consumer use case? Yes. Thank you. Okay, the next steps. Uh, I would I would say uh, business and functional objectives would be to introduce a clustering algorithm for segmenting the customers uh, in the in the current scenario. Uh, the, the the customer segments that we have currently are not are out of data, as, as I was explaining also in the in the first slide. So uh, in order to have a good results, we need to have to have a a good segmentation of the customers and this is one of the next steps to, to make this uh, this clustering algorithm run in our model then uh, to create a model for prediction of the next uh, customer purchases okay to to create a new model completely different not a collaborative filtering modeling but a content based uh, model more uh, on which we take into account what what a user has uh, purchased in the in the past in order to to predict when he has they need to buy uh, one item again, no? and then when we see this is the time to to buy it, then we we would like to to recommend it to to, to this user. No? And this is as as business objectives. No? As the integration with big data stack objectives, we would like uh, as as uh, as you saw uh, before, our model is is starting from a from a photo from a snapshot, on which we have the information stored in in in, a, in our data store that is Linux scale. No? What we would like to do is to 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 integrate with the with the with the part of big data stack that that allow us to 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 absorb information uh, for injecting data in real time uh, of orders and also maybe data from 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 external data data sources. Okay. Also, we would like uh, to to integrate with some of the data services like with the data cleaning services because we have seen that our Data is full of mistakes, and, 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 and this, this service would, would uh, help to have a, a data with better quality. And also, we would like to, to integrate with the end user tools of big data stacks, such as process modeling framework and, and the data toolkit, okay? Because uh, we will need them in order to inject a, a new anal analytical algorithm. As I said, uh, uh, it was one of our business objectives, okay? So that's it. That's the next steps. Thanks. Thank you, Bernat. Um, so, as I said in the beginning, we would also like to have some insights uh, from your side. So, some, have some inputs on, on on your ideas about uh, big data and your your own situations uh, with big data. Um, so, Andrea, can I ask you to launch the poll? The poll will have four questions, and you have about two minutes to um, to answer them. Um, so uh, then we will go on with uh, questions from the floor uh, so that all the panel members, uh, Demosthenes, uh, Orlando and Bernat can answer uh, to you. So but please uh, take a, a short time to, uh, to fill out this poll that we will use uh, in our future work. Yeah, just one more note from my side, Marek. You can launch uh, one poll for time, so please, you hold both to the poll, so I can close this one and pass to the next one. Okay. 
I can see that 21% of the attendees voted already. So there are someone, there is someone missing. So please all provide your answer uh, so that we can close this question and continue to the next. So that we have enough time for your questions as well. Okay, and closing in passing to the next question, Marik. I would yeah. say that one minute is more than enough for, for each question. Yeah, actually, I would like to, to reduce it to 30 seconds so that we have more time for the questions okay. as well. So. so, the next question. Okay, and closing and passing for the third question. Actually, there are five questions, not four, Marek, but by the way. Okay, even more reason to keep them to 30 seconds then. <laughs> yeah. Just few people are voting, less than half of the attendees. It's very important for us that you, you give us some insights so that we know that what your what you what your needs are in, in the big data um, and uh, how big data stack could could fit into that. Wait the fifty percent with this question. Fifty seven. It's okay, I'm closing it. Thanks, Andrea. Yeah. There are two more. Please vote. Okay. Pass into the last question now. While everybody's answering the last question, um, yep. so Andrea, the questions from the audience should be taken in the chat or in the questions part? Well, no, uh, there's a tab, you know, uh, popping up on the monitor of our attendees and they can vote directly there. But questions from the floor, so I would like to open the floor to the questions okay, to, so to the panel members. Can, there is a question box uh, in which people can write. So is that questions or chat? Questions, questions. Okay, so if everybody, uh, those who have a question, uh, please post them in the in the question uh, chat. Um, so we can know. So if you have a question to Dimos about the, the general overview of Big Data Stack, if you have more specific questions on the use case, uh, and the barriers or and challenges that uh, that um, uh, Bernard has overcome in in the use case in, in the implementation phase, uh, or more uh, technical questions to Orlando uh, on specific uh, components. I'm not sure if I'm missing questions or if if the panelists have been very very clear. Maybe it's your second option, Mike. <laughs> um, so, want to keep the floor open a bit longer for for uh, some questions from uh, about uh, the um, about the webinar uh, presentations uh, we just had. We can already maybe launch the next webinar of the series, Mike. Yes. 
That's a good idea, Andrea. So mm -hmm. um, while you're thinking of your questions, uh, the next uh, webinar will be on uh, shipping, where our uh, project partner that um, that Dimos already uh, showed you, uh, Danaos, is uh, working on uh, implementing the big data technologies uh, on, in shipping. So that's that's our next uh, webinar. It takes place on the 26th of June at two o'clock at the same time. I think there is a question. Yes. Okay. So the question comes from Nikos. Uh, how mm -hmm. can we facilitate the flow of information from various data sets which might contain heterogeneous data? Who wants to take that question? Dimos, Orlando, or Bernat? So, I don't know what we mean with different, um, so whether there are also different data sources. So, um, I can explain the approach we follow on that. So, there is a gateway um, in our architecture and our implementation according to, so when the data arrives at the infrastructure level, this data are either stored on the um, Linux scale database we are using or are stored in the um, IBM um, mean I.O. object store. Um, so depending on the different data sets, they are redirected to the different data stores. Um, but, you know, I would say this is something um, honestly not innovative. The innovation we are introducing in Big Data Stack is what we call the seamless analytics framework, which sits on top of these two different data stores. Um, and the Simulus Analytical Framework is capable of analyzing the data regardless of their location. I mean, whether these are on the database or whether these are on the data store, on the object store, uh, without the need to move the data from one to the other. So it's like, you know, um, distributing the query and federating the results. Uh, on top of that, we have implemented a mechanism because, you know, someone would expect that the database would keep, for example, operational data or transactional data, um, what we call, you know, the data copy, and then data are moved to the object store, which could act also as a data lake, um, in a way to um, always know which data have been used uh, and how they have been used and copied so as to optimize later the, the analytics and the management of the data. Um, so that's, that's what we are doing to handle different data sets. There are some additional aspects like, you know, the cleaning mechanism on which we assess um, the quality of the data and we annotate the data with quality attributes. Uh, the innovation here is that this is completely domain agnostic, so whether the data are uh, consumer data or whether the data are shipping or health data. Uh, the mechanism is based on machine learning and deep learning approaches to identify the values you would expect in the data set and annotate it accordingly. And uh, also a very interesting approach, again on the data aspects, on the data side comes from IBM, which is about data skipping. So looking at the queries being performed on the data based on the values of interest and the outcome of the queries, um, some data are skipped uh, so as you know to optimize performance and minimize the resource needs. Um, so hope I, I covered the question because I didn't really got what heterogeneous was about, uh, whether it was the source, the data per se, or you know later on the analytics. Thank you, Dimas, for that that uh, answer. It was very uh, very clear. Um, Nikos, do you have another question? Do you, did you see your question answered? I don't know if you can answer though in this modus. Uh, is there any other question? Oh, yes, there is a yes. You were very clear and answered my question. Uh, says Nikos. Nikos, thank you. Any other questions? No? Then I would like to thank you all for uh, for joining the webinar. The recordings will be uh, published on the website as well as the slides uh, and we will have a short uh, uh, post-webinar report uh, also with your input on uh, so your insights on, on, on the questions uh, asked. Okay, 
So thank you very much. Thank you, Dimos. Thank you, Bernat, and thank you, Orlando, for uh, for your insights in the in the webinar. And see you on the 26th of June, hopefully. Thank you. Thank you. Thank bye. you. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye.